Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about head injury or traumatic brain injury they call it. About very, It's a long time to take but I'll present a short sort of essay about it to say what is head injury and what is the treatment, what are the types and what is the complications and how to do rehabilitation. So traumatic brain injury is the main cause of disability and death around the world. There are about 10 million people every year involved in the road traffic accident or involved in head injury. In UK, 1.4 million patient comes in accident and emergency. Out of that is 30 to 50 persons are head injury patient. So head injury causes, the main cause is road traffic accident, fall, occupational injuries, and uh, in children especially, crossing, crossing the road or motorbike injuries. In child, in very small children, it's a shaking usually can cause the diffuse axonal injuries. Divided into three, mild, moderate, and severe head injuries. So the mild injury, is just, we call it a concussion, which is a momentary loss of brain function. And that could be, again, categorized in two to three. Loss of function less than five minutes, grade one loss of function more than 10 minutes. And then moderate head injuries Again, when there is a loss of function or loss of consciousness for more than 15 minutes in post-traumatic, I mean amnesia, loss of the events for an hour. And in severe head injury, then loss of consciousness and amnesia from four, for 24 hours to seven days. And also we can divide the head injury into primary and secondary head injury. So primary head injury first, we will discuss it. I'll divide into two sharp and blunt. Again, then depressed skull fracture, coop and counter coop injury. Sharp head injury is the sharpness like bullet wounds, like something falling on the head which leave foreign body in the head. And then also a depressed fracture. <clears throat> Sorry, as you know that depressed fracture is the cause of a trauma of, like somebody hit with somebody with a hammer the skull goes into the brain. From these words, it's called depression. So it is, depression is again, if it is more than half a centimeter, that will need a surgery. Less than that, probably it will be observed. And in blunt head injuries, like coop, counter coop injuries, it is the one that when there is a trauma hacker, just giving you the example, on the back of the head. So the head goes forward. There is a primary injury in the head. And then there's a counter coup. When the brain shakes like that, go into the front region. That is called counter coup injury. It has been seen if there is a blood under the coop injury just below the head and the back of the head 
in the brain or on the brain surface. You can see the blood interiorly as well. That part is called countercoup because the brain shakes and especially there is a sharp parts in the frontal area with the brain shaking, small vessels, ruptures and cause hematoma there as well. And also it could be open injury or closed head injury. Closed head injury when there is no injury to the scalp or to the head but the patient has injured especially in small children when they, are, they shake badly. In open injury when there is a breakdown of the skin and then the head and also in the brain is going it. So these are the primary injuries while the secondary head injuries is the main one we want to stop happening once the insult to the head is occurred the sec secondary part of head injury should be prevent as soon as possible as as early as is possible because i can divide this secondary head injury into intracranial or extracranial intracranial head injuries Secondary injury can happen the patient presented with epilepsy, maybe due to extradural hematoma, subdural hematoma, or maybe to several edema, or maybe to intracerebral hematoma. So it means that the extradural hematoma, as you know, is just the dura has got covering, which is covering of the brain. It has got three layer: arachnoid meter, dura meter, arachnoid meter, and pia meter. And just underlying the bone is the dura. Any blood collection on the surface of the brain and under the surface of the bone, collection of blood to that is called extradural hematoma. And then, then it comes subdural hematoma. Subdural hematoma, when there is collection of collection of blood under the dura between the arachnoid and pia meter, that could be acute and chronic. In acute subdural hematoma, the underlying brain may be bruised and the hematoma may be small or may be big. The big hematoma with increase in cranial pressure and swelling need a surgery. Small hematoma could be watched while due to extensive axonal injury because of that subdural hematoma. The pressure on the brain will be high. You may have to do full craniotomy, a big one, and then assess after taking the CSF, the clot out, to see is the bone flap that you taken out, the big craniotomy that you make it, made it, would it go back on the head or not? It could be decided on the bulging of the brain. Sometimes the brain is bulge too much that you cannot put that craniotomy bone flap back. So in that case, we have to take out that bone. Sometimes this bone is discarded and for the future that empty space cranioplasty is made titanium input into the, that area to make cosmetically the skull normal. But some people somewhere they put that bone flap which is taken from the abdomen, it was taken from the head, put it 
subcutaneously into the abdomen mainly, left side or the right side. Once the patient has recovered, improved, then they took out from the abdomen and put it back on its own place. So major some people it says it's good because it's the patient's own bone, on bone, less chances of infections. But then some says that to keep it bone in a bone bank and put it back may cause infection as well. So both side could be done. That was acute subdural hematoma and now the chronic subdural hematoma can also occur. It's mainly occur chronic subdural hematoma in old age, in 60 years above. The patient is not knowing that he had a bang to the head. That small bang in the head can cause the bridging vein, we call it a bridging vein, which is in the brain and to the dura, that is tear off and slowly, slowly the blood collecting into the subdural area till it causes symptomatic. When you ask the patient to take the history, he will not remember that he had a head injury, but when you take the detailed history from him, he says three weeks ago, yes, I banged my head, but nothing happened to me. Actually, that was the cause of the head injury that he had, bang, bang in the head. He may present with difficult in speech, slurred speech. He may present with the headache. He, he may present with the difficult in walking or sometimes weakness in the limb, left side or right side. So that could, chronic is not so serious, chronic subdural hematoma, that could be drained because it gets fluids, fluidy above two or two, three weeks, just with a couple, couple of burr hole could be drained and washed and put the drain for 24 to 48 hours, the patient will be fine. So now, this was just the shot of the primary and secondary bone in, in, uh, brain injuries. Now we will come to the assessment of the patient. So as I say, the first one is the, to assess the patient, we usually assess the patient by a Glasgow Coma Scale. Glasgow Coma Scale is a number scale, which is 15 is the highest, an inch is very normal. But 13 to 15, that will be a minor head injury or mild head injury. And then from 13 to 9 or 8, that will be moderate head injury, the number I'm talking about. And you will see from the slides that what they mean by that. And from eight below, it is a severe brain injury. And the severe brain, in, brain injury, it is, as I said, to the Glasgow Coma Scale, is just eye-opening, vocal response, and motor response that we divide it into that. It is the moderate brain and the severe brain injury which we have to reduce the complication of it. Moderate head injury, the patient is brought to the casualty department. We make it sure apart from other injuries that he should be well infused. Blood pressure will be at normal size. Any bleeding from the head should be stopped and the CT scan should be done. Patient may have, as I said, extradural hematoma, acute subdural hematoma, or intracerebral hematoma, which is needed to be done. They may be watched into the ward closely, and then, if deteriorated, taken to theater. But sometimes they do deteriorate from eight downwards or from 10 downwards 
A&E could be taken straight to the theater to do what is necessary to do. While the coma patient, which is coma, which is the severe brain injury, that is the brain injury which is ventilated on the site of the accident when the ambulance people see it or ventilated as soon as possible brought to the hospitals. So it has been said that on the site ventilation is not as good as into the hospital which is known. So once you ventilate the patient, assess clinically, take the history, exclude other injuries, the patient should be put to the scanner. Once the patient has done the scan, that's the main thing, then you have a two pathways for the treatment. One is the operation pathway, one is the non-operative pathway. The operative pathway, if the patient had a extradural hematoma or subdural hematoma which need to evacuate or intracerebral hematoma which need to be operated, that should be done. But the conservative pathway which need to go to the ITU, it means that patient has got axonal injuries and there is nothing to do surgically. But sometimes if edema is more, then they do the big craniotomy, which we call it decompressive craniotomy, to give the brain a space to swell, the swelling to give the space to the brain. That could be done. If that was not done, the patient will go to ITU, what we call it ICP monitor device, to put the ice intracranial pressure device. That is through the frontal bone, a small twist drill is made and probe is put and then connected to the computer to see mon monitoring the pressure. The pressure, the normal pressure we can tolerate up to 25. If it more than that, then the patient should have a CT scan and check it again. And more than that deteriorated, he may need to the theater, especially if the pupils are dilated. So this was just a short treatment of it. But no, the head injury has got a complications. Complication, again, I'll divide it into acute, which is in hospital, and late when the patient goes out of the hospital. In, con in concussion, usually the patient recover up to three to four weeks, but sometimes it takes up to three months. In some of the patient, which is very, up to one, one percent of the people, they still goes and comes to the doctor after a year. While in moderate one, complication and severe one. Complication is main is the ITU complication, I would say, because the patient may have a tracheostomy, get infected due to the twist drain, CSF leak, skull base leak from the nose, from the ear, and also bladder problem with the catheter problem and also the patient may have a acquired hospital or acquired ITU infection as well. And then the patient may have a pneumothorax which may have to put the chest drain. So all these in the acute one. Once the patient is out from the ITU and then out to the ward, then there is a rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is a long process initially in the hospital to, to have a good physiotherapy done. And then after that, when he go to the rehabilitation 
center. That's the important part of the patient with the head injuries. So head injuries, as I say, is a long topic, but that was, I tried to present as short as I could do. I hope it will give you some benefit to understand. Thank you very much for watching and listening.